Hello and welcome to Artists Soar. This is a podcast for artists by three artists. We discuss all aspects of being artists, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The goal of each podcast is to provide solutions so artists can focus on their creativity and soar above. I'm Rachel Harshenko. Jules McCullough. Stephanie Weaver. A rejection is nothing more than a necessary step in the pursuit of success, a quote by Bo Bennett. So in this episode, we are talking about rejection and how it can make you better, ways to handle it, and everything that goes around rejection. (laughs) But what are you guys working on? Well, I am gearing up for my annual advent calendar. That has kind of become a theme the last couple of years. Yeah, it's so and, cute. And so I'm hoping to make it even better this year since I've learned a lot the last two years I've done it. Working on getting that all put together. So in December, it'll be start sure. December 1st on my website, Juliam Studios. And you don't want to miss it. No, it's going to be, it's, it's cute. Fun. Some days are just quotes, some days are freebies. So it's just, it's a great idea. I love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but well, you've been talking about your website, so I'm still trying to get everything in my Shopify account. So that's what I'm still working on. Mm. And so I'm gearing up for a little show in November. So (laughs) that'll be fun. Mm. Yeah. I don't know, like. What I'm exactly going to do yet. <laughs> so, Are you still doing your outdoor? Yeah, but I haven't been able to do it. Like uh, just a whole month of September, I wasn't able to do it because uh, Ben's been out of the country. And so you've had soccer. Oh, my God. So much soccer. So <laughs> much soccer. And um, so, yeah, I haven't had a chance for me on weekends. But yeah. so I'm looking forward to him getting back <laughs> and being <laughs> back be and I can nice. get the, the time back on those Saturdays where I have dedicated paint time and talk about the paintings and art and all nice. that good stuff. Very I think nice. that was love that. a really good benefit for you this yeah, summer. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it really is. It, I think it's really kind of helped also identify that I need more people interaction. Yeah. Because I don't get down as much. That's good. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. That is good. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> Rejection sucks. And how do you guys handle it? And what do you do? Well, after the initial reaction, I'll, I hit the floor and then, <laughs> no, no, mm-hmm. no, just kidding. But yeah, no, that's true. The, the initial is a good, little bit of a gut punch. Yeah. But then you breathe and keep going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little bit of imposter syndrome for me. And then, you know, you keep going. Like I've been trying to do a goal of, you know, I want X number of no's in order to get to the yes, because we all know you have to, to get a ton of no's in order to get to one yes. But still, it still hits you in the gut and you've got to deal with it. And some days are better than others for dealing with it. Right. Because mm-hmm. um, you're you're applying to a lot of, you know, trying to get an agent. I'm going to start doing that too with the um, trying to get a literary agent. Yeah. So, so the literary agent is n- not a small a small feat. Well, I don't think what she's doing no, a small feat. No, it's either. not. It's not. But I'm saying like I expect I, to get a lot of rejection. There's yes. a lot of authors that are famous today that are like. Nobody picked me up. Yeah, for right. 100, and yeah, it 100 was notes like, and it kept going. Well, that's how it is with licensing. And it ended yeah. up being like a third or fourth mm-hmm. book that they had put in for. Yeah. That mm-hmm. someone finally picked them up. Yeah. I mean, the and same thing with license. Thing. Yeah. Right. And it exact might be one thing. of those same things. Like, you just kind of keep going and produce the work yourself. Right. Until at some point, you know, the magic door opens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But mm-hmm. the point is, you got to mm-hmm. knock on those magic doors. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody's right. Gonna, you know? Because, I mean, the, the bottom line is, I, if I hadn't reached out to the few that I have so far, I wouldn't have added them to my newsletter. I wouldn't have gotten my art in front of an agent to mm-hmm. begin with. And so, trying to turn a negative into a positive, I think, is the number one key to handling rejection. It's not easy. I was going to say, yeah. that's the... I'm not saying it's that's easy. That's the key, but, like, well, how do you even do that? Well, I think 
the goal of having so many no's. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at um, the number of no's that, uh, oh, crap, his name just just um, slipped my tongue. And I know you both know him. He's famous. He had hundreds and hundreds and thousands of no's before he finally got one yes that made him famous. Grissom? John Grisham? Yes, he did. He's yeah. one, but that's not the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, his book, Time to Kill, was rejected like 50, 60 times. times. Yeah. Well, I know, like, I mean, this is not like rejection, but like Babe Ruth also had the most number of strikeouts. Right. right. They take the shot. Yeah. And you know, Michael Jordan, take the 56. shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. percent fail rate or something right. like that. Right. Exactly. I mean, you've got to have a fail rate in order to, order to even, you know, get to a yes. Because if you're not getting no's, that means you're not putting your work out there. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing that you've just, that's where I think turning it into a positive, like I'm looking for, yes, I got another no today, you know, like being excited about getting the no, Mm -hmm. but I have found that the no's have turned into not right now, reach out to me later. I've responded in a positive way saying, you know, hey, since you were interested, would you mind being on my newsletter list? I send out a new piece of art every two weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that mm-hmm. um, to turn it into a positive from a negative. Because that That's right there idea. is also showing them that, yes, you continue to produce art. Here's the things that I produce. And eventually mm-hmm. it's going to something's going to speak to them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's the same thing with, you know, literary, literary agents and children's books and all that stuff. No matter what it is you're trying to do, you've got it. You've got to have a no. Yeah. So let me ask you this. You're say you're an artist. You're out there. You're putting your artwork out there. You're going to the shows this year or whatever. Since COVID, they've like, OK, I'm going to start doing shows and nobody is stopping. Nobody is purchasing and they feel like those are rejections. Well, how do you turn that into a positive for them? Like, what are some ideas that you would give to someone like that? Who's like, oh my gosh, shows are a waste of time. I'm right. just quitting. Well, for me, my thought is the first question that pops into my head, because this is me. This is why I'm asking this question, because this is me. Mm-hmm. Are you just sitting in your booth waiting for people to come right. in? Or are you outside your booth enticing people to come in? Right. Talking to them, having mm-hmm. conversation with them. I know my my brother, he always said, if you've got time to lean, you got time to clean type of thing. <laughs> and so basically, that's what that's saying is if you look lethargic, nobody's going to want to talk with you. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one thing that I would do, and I know Jim Solomon, this is what he did, is he actually started looking around at the other booths that mm-hmm. were selling. What are they doing different right. that you are not doing? And yes. He, and, and he that's went and good. talked to them. Yeah. He would go and talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true. And that really helped him increase his sales. Yeah. Now, I'm going to laugh because both of you have taken me to shows because, you know, I will go up to people and talk right. to them. Right. I know. She's what are you doing best. October 11th? Right? <laughs> or November 11th or whatever the date is. Yes. I will be there for you guys. You know it. <laughs> but that's the, the point is like, you know, I'm like, what's the worst things that's going to happen? You know, they're going to yeah. go, oh, I'm not, I'm not interested today. Okay. I mean, if you're sitting around on your phone. Nobody's I mean, going to talk to you. Nobody's going to want to Right, talk to you. exactly. Or if you're sitting back in the corner yeah, and people are going to look, but they're not necessarily going to buy because you're not engaging with them. Mm-hmm. And I would also like say you can even have friends come and have them kind Could of you? mill about. They will just mill yeah. about oh, in your booth. Yeah. So they're like, Make it look full. yeah, what are uh, like the clappers out in the audience? They're oh, the ones that yes. are meant to clap. You have people in there that are your advocates. Ooh, that's I a good that idea. idea. That, that is, is awesome. <laughs> Never thought about that. that okay, really but if you idea. don't have friends, <laughs> if you don't have friends <laughs> or you're an introvert, at least, you know, put the phone down. Be willing to like, paint. If you're yeah. an introvert, yeah. have a piece you're working on at the show. And, yeah. and that way, maybe have that in front of you right. or where they can see that way you're not necessarily interacting, but you are. Right. Right. One of the things I loved, and I saw this, I 
probably on Instagram or Facebook. It was like a little reel. And this guy, what he was doing, he was sitting on the subway and he was just quickly drawing all these people that were yes, around him. Yes, and he gave them to him. Oh my God. And the, the, the responses that they had. I mean, can you imagine being able to do that at like an art show and you're just right. kind of sitting there and you're just draw, draw, draw. People are walking by and you just kind of hand it to them. Wow. I mean, how engaging, how memorable would yep. that be? I mean, I'm giving myself chills. But um, that, the point is, to, you, you've you got like a, an amazing skill. You can show it off Use at these it. things. Right. And, you know, the people that are, that are walking, continue to walking by... Let them keep walking. It's fine. But yeah, eventually that's not your audience. Right. Your audience will find you. Right. But you have to be out there. You yeah. can't. Yes. And they're not going to find you if you're just sitting there. Well, one of our friends is um, they're trying to build up their email newsletter. And every time they send out an email, they notice like all these people are dropping from their email list. Yeah. yeah so that that's they're taking that as as a rejection. And my thoughts on that, and I want to know your guys' thoughts on that. Okay. Is it, do you think, the email content, or are they just not the right audience? Or maybe it's even both. Or is there something else that might be in consideration there? I would look at, is it spammy? Are you doing it too often? Maybe you're doing it too often. You're not providing content value. Mm -hmm. And it might be the wrong audience. But right. did they sign up and... I mean, they wouldn't have signed up for your email, though. I mean, the newsletter, they weren't interested. Right. So what were they interested in about you? Right. So you need to have some sort of survey back to them going, hey, how can I best serve you? Exactly. What content or what... Not content. I think content What led is you to... Yeah. What would you like to it's see? It's like, sorry to see you go, but what made you... What made what you would you like to, to see? Yeah. 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 But what... It's, in, yeah. yeah. It's like the questionnaires when you do More unsubscribe to somebody, you know, it'll go in there. You get in too many emails. Mm -hmm. You're just you, you're not interested in this topic anymore. You know, whatever. It's got like five or six different options that you can click or other and get their information of why. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, because there's a number of things it could be. It could be mm -hmm. that it is the content or maybe you're providing too much stuff in an email. Mm -hmm. And because um, I found my open rate jumped 10% when I limited it to three items per email and they're mm -hmm. visual. I don't have a lot of words. Mm -hmm. They have to click to read more, mm -hmm. but it gives them a quick little blurb of what's happening in my studio mm -hmm. over the last overview. two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, that, and I don't have a very high open rate, but I have a good open rate mm -hmm. and that jumped 10%. Nice. So by providing value. So mm -hmm. what we're talking about there is when somebody removes themselves, learn from it. All right. these things, all, every single rejection is an opportunity to, to take, mm -hmm. learn from, and move forward with a new action. Right. I think as, essentially what we're talking about is with rejection, just on every day rejection. I say every day, don't, hopefully not every day, but. It's a chance for you to evaluate mm -hmm. um, what you're doing. So like a show or something or your email, whatever. But like for you, like you've got down what you want. You don't have to evaluate it. You just know that at this point now you're putting your work out there. And so you're going to have right. some no's. Yeah. Like you're yeah. comfortable where you are as an artist, designer, writer whatever mm -hmm. and you're like okay i'm ready to go i know i'm gonna get some no's and put it out there right but up until you get to that point it's an evaluation like get your friends to kind of hopefully you, you've got some good friends who will give you sound <laughs> advice i mean we've talked about that before too yeah. um who will critique you fairly and honestly and lovingly um, <laughs> critique, like, what do you think about this? And then yeah. go on. Right. I mean, like, your friend with the email, they've talked to you about it because they know you're going to give them valued critique back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In a yeah. in a loving way. Yeah. And not, like, going to go, oh, your email's crap. 
Right. right. No yeah. wonder. I would never no say that. No wonder. <laughs> I've never say you know that. what I mean? Like, yeah. right. No yeah. wonder no one's coming into your booth. I mean, you don't want to talk to those people. No. Right. That's well, and I think You it's, know what I mean? You want the encouraging, mm-hmm. uh, loving. I call it sandwich. You know, you're giving yeah. them the meat, uh, you got a the bread, which is, yeah, an Oreo sandwich. So you got like the. The Which is all yummy, tasty. But. Yummy good stuff. And then the meat is in the middle of the actual action followed by yummy, mm-hmm. uh, yummy good stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. It's like I'm not going to change who I am as an artist, but I'm going to reevaluate with each rejection. OK, maybe I need to A-B test some of my emails. Oh, yeah. Because that's the sta- oh, that's stage that I'm idea. at now. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, OK, so mm-hmm. I've gotten some good replies with this email. Let me test a different email. And send that Mm -hmm. out to the next 10 people Mm -hmm. and see how that one does compared to this one. Right. Because right now it's kind of long. Maybe I need to shorten it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I need it to just be two sentences or three sentences Mm -hmm. and see what comes back. So with your list that you're sending out to, Mm -hmm. are you saving like those like last five, 10 that you really, really, really want? Yes, I am. (laughs) You know it. Yeah. I have four licensing agents that I... I are my top four Mm -hmm. and I mean, I really have top five, but one is not going to happen, but Oh my gosh. See that this is giving me anxiety. I would have already sent it out. So no, that was the best advice I got from my coach was do not send it to those (sighs) that you really want. Right. Okay. Send it to the ones that you don't care if they say yes or no to. Get get, get used to the no's. Yeah. Well, well not even so much that. Yeah. You'll perfect what you're sending. Exactly. See, you're still evaluating then what you're sending and how you're sending right. it. Right. That's and... what I was trying to say before is like, I I'm gotcha. not going to change what my work is, but I'm always going to evaluate what it is I'm doing. It's and like what we they're have... looking at. Right. Mm-hmm. Because it was like we were talking about the newsletter stuff earlier. Um, getting newsletter subscribers. Well, obviously what I'm doing isn't working, but what you two (laughs) are doing is working, you know? So it's, it's, um, okay, sorry. I'm sneezing. She's going to explode. All right. (laughs) I'm trying to sneeze quietly. Anyway, okay, sorry. But, um, I like the whole point of reevaluating, redoing, relisting. Mm-hmm. I think that's so good with rejections. Yeah. Because it's hard. You know, I'm sending out. I want to tell a little bit about myself. I want to share my portfolio or a snippet of my portfolio. I'm not even showing my whole portfolio. So you may change give up them information. You may be changing up the So this next round, or- I think I'm going to shorten it and make it only about five to ten sentences, maybe two short paragraphs, and see if I get better response from that. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Like, if you think about some of these other industries, like music industry and uh, the comedians, mm-hmm. they all start out in these small little clubs. Yeah. And then they build up. They, they identify what's working in these small little clubs and then go out mm-hmm. to the big ones. Oh, yeah. Right. And for some reason, I think artists, they're just like, oh, I'm just going to go after this big thing or I'm not worthy of this big thing. When they haven't tried all these little things first. Right. See, that's it. true. And it even is the true. big yeah. comedians will go back to the exactly. smaller places to, to try test. new work. To test they totally do. Stuff. Yes. And then they take it back to the big stuff. Right. Because, yep. see, another thing that I have that I can change in my email too is the snippet of portfolio that I'm attaching I can change out what artwork is in that and see if that gets another response but I don't want to change two things at the same time I only want to change one thing so I wonder if there's a way so uh, you guys both heard a hot jar hot jar Mm -hmm. is like I'll explain to them so hot jar is like a website um, provider that will actually evaluate how people interact on your website oh that's right so um, my mind is touches yeah by touches how long would they linger in a certain spot um, whether they're reading and things like that so my mind's going to why couldn't we make your portfolio a website all that on its own so you can evaluate where are they linger that's a great idea. And then you can react on that. Mm-hmm. That is a really good idea. I am so smart. It's like <laughs> I know stupid. you no, are. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. No, that is good. A blind squirrel finds a nut. No, I know. <laughs> I love 
that. Okay. No, but I it's need true. That that's a good, That's a really <laughs> yeah. I expect to see that. Oh no. Because you you got a cute squirrel. I do have some squirrels. <gasps> Please make that. I'll, I will buy. I will actually buy that shirt. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Why? I don't. Are, does somebody own that quote? I got. I don't know. No. Really? It's an open quote. Oh well. Look at that. Double check I'll, it. I'll, I'll double check <laughs> it. But, yeah, that thing is. Anywho, uh, but that but, would be neat. Yeah, but I think the idea. key thing that you know, because I've never been able to handle rejection has always led to imposter syndrome for mm. me and it still does don't it get does, me wrong yeah. like i have had days where i got that no and i'm like oh god my work is just not good enough and i start researching and looking mm. at other artists that are successful and seeing what yeah. they're doing and then i'm like okay reel it back in why do i want to be like somebody else i want right. to be myself i want to be who i am I want to be true to me what can I do differently that's going to, it's all about mindset and evaluation. Mm -hmm. But I think number one is mindset with rejection. Like that's the first thing that you've got to figure out is how you can set your mind to handle it. And know that you're going to get it. Yeah. I mean like that, I just wrote that down. Mindset. Yeah. I mean, that's the number one thing I think. And then number two is, and this is just my opinion, but number two is, um, figuring out how to turn it into a positive to handle it. Mm -hmm. And just know that some people are going to bring you down. Yeah. No matter what. Right. You're in that Facebook, Twitter world where they're going to sit in their mom's basement and criticize <laughs> you for getting out and doing something, something wonderful. Yeah. Right. And, well, am I wrong? I know no, you're laughing, no, but it's totally no, right. you're totally right. I just got the visual, though, of like somebody in their basement, you know, so yeah. in a great T-shirt. Yeah. 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 On a really bad couch. Yeah. 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 You see, you it's see like it? the 30 something year old living in their parents basement. I, th I think I know it's, it's been a scene in a TV show somewhere and they're just like a computer de geek trying to. To ruin somebody else's day. She almost didn't say geek. I know what you were going to say. Like, you, you clean yeah. that up really quick. <laughs> yeah, there's people out there like that. Who Trolls. Are, are, they're unhappy and they want to drag everybody else down with them. Yeah, yeah. And there's, um, it, this is actually an artist <laughs> in, my, one of my, in my book about the, the negative bias. So mm -hmm. our minds focus on that one negative comment, even though we can get like 20 plus other comments that are all raving and loving. Mm -hmm. And then you get that one little turd that's sitting in the basement. That's just yep. like, oh. yes. And they're going to, they're going to go, oh, why did you use that shade of blue? And yeah. you're like, it's not what I would have done. What? Well, right. I don't care. This is okay. your painting. You, right. <laughs> you get up and you paint it then. Right. And that a lot of artists have like starting to like see that and like take that on it's like oh i you know i i wouldn't pay a thousand dollars for that okay don't right right don't why did you don't. take my time to say that exactly why oh my gosh i, I know all the time it's like exactly. i posted that question about where right. to <laughs> marketing i was doing some marketing research to figure out mm -hmm. where to find I don't even remember exactly what the question was, but basically where to find, where agents. do agent, agents hang out? Right. You mm -hmm. know, where, where are they looking for stuff? Mm -hmm. Where's the best place to invest your time? And an agent responded, <laughs> an agent responded, well, if you don't know where they're hanging out, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, then I, you know, basically then you shouldn't be looking for an agent. Yeah, what a turd. That was so unhelpful. It was not. I'm like, what was your purpose to writing that? Like. To bring you down. And I think I had a above board response. Yeah, you totally did. It was way better than I would have done. Because <laughs> my gut reaction is like, are you that much of a bitch? Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Express but, it. No. Yeah. <laughs> but like, seriously, yeah. um, you know, like, what, why was that? You're an agent. Well, you clearly don't and work the thing with about that it, one. Uh -uh. That is going to work against her because oh, yeah. everyone on your page saw what she wrote. Oh, exactly. Right? And it doesn't matter. She goes well, she, back in and She's in a big, it. I posted this in a big membership group mm -hmm. or not membership group, but a big, pretty good sized group on Facebook. So mm -hmm. I know anyone that saw that. I, in fact, I had one girl that I had been communicating with that private messaged me back. Well, that was really rude. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, good response. Right. <laughs> so this agent did nothing for herself. 
Right. And no. now nobody from that group will use her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so she just missed out on it's like, how many members are in that group? I don't know. A couple thousand, probably. That's maybe wow. a thousand. A I don't lot know. of people, though. Yeah. That's it is. a lot of people. It's a good sized group. That she it's not just small. showed her butt to. Yeah. <laughs> she did. And that's the thing that, like, when you get that rejection or that negative thing thrown at yeah. you, you've got to twist it. I mean, my first reaction was to just, are you really that stupid? Like, seriously. But I was like, no, I'm going to go to my computer. I'm going to draft something that's useful to everybody else out there. So right. why did you, I want to read not that just later, me, but that'll be but good. But yeah, I mean, well, and that's how you have to handle rejection. And one of the way, so kind of like a practical application that I've been doing, because I get a ton of people that just love to hear their own voices on my Facebook ads. Yes. And that is so <laughs> insane. I know it is insane. Though some of the ones that you've it's told a, me. I'm you like, can see it's an ad and they're, they're talking on it. And you're like, okay. <laughs> What's your point there, fella? And But I'll, I'll, <laughs> I have a separate uh, text document that I write exactly what I want to say that I never actually say. And then, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea. Because it gets that initial, like, just angst out that you feel. And yeah. then, okay, so now that I got that out, now I can be productive. Oh, and that reminds me. I have this great <laughs> thing that somebody gave me a tip on in my OneNote. Mm -hmm. And it is basically what it is. I can't remember what it's called right now. I'm looking it up. It's like my burn book. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it's the opposite of that. It's, oh, it's a fab fabulous file. Fabulous book. Yeah. <laughs> it's called The Fabulous File. And in there, I put positive things that people have said about me oh, and yeah. my work. I love oh, that. Yeah. Oh. So we're writing, we're writing a sound. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous file. All of a sudden, dead silence. <laughs> Sorry about um, that. Audience. I don't we're remember. Writing, so I wish I could remember. We're as we're going. I know. I, can, I wish I remember who gave me that idea. That's well, a I great think it idea. came from your France trip. I think so too. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Because they wrote you everybody wrote down something wonderful about you. Right. Oh, right. Yes, because we did the little letters to oh, each I other. Love that. Um Aww. what were they called? Aww. I know. We could do that in my little community. Like yeah. how fun would that be to that everybody be write fun. each other a love oh, letter? Oh, that'd be fun other than a holiday gift yes. to do that. Yes. Everybody has to write something nice to another, to each member. Yeah, because we do yeah. like, a, we typically do a secret Santa. Yeah, but instead of that, I think you should do the yeah. love notes. Love notes. Oh, that would be fun for Valentine's Day. That'd be, oh, yeah. that'd be better. Love yeah, notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that idea. Well, and then I know another thing that we talked about once before for rejection is to write it down, write like all your feelings down and then go burn it. Yes. Um, oh, yes. We did that at one of the retreats, too. And that was really yeah. like we took a mistake we had made in our business uh -huh. and wrote that down and then burned it. Oh, I haven't That's burned great... anything in so long. No, you haven't. It, I, it's very. It's very. Yeah. <laughs> this fall, I know, sorry, I'm getting all excited over here. We have like three different burn piles out here. We need to have like a real, like a big burn pile and you guys come over and we'll do s'mores. Oh, That's a great fun. idea. And just yeah. turn it into like, throw it in the fire and, yep. and move on with your life with something sweet. Yeah. Yep. That's a That's good idea. That's what we need to do. Just yeah. move on with your life because whatever Joe Blow says on your Facebook account, or Instagram or, or in this group or whatever, or whatever. It does it matter. affect your life? Right. No. Right. You are doing something beautiful. You're creating art for the love of it and showing it to the world. Yeah. Yeah. Not Great. everyone's going to like it. No. Yeah. So it all comes back to mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yeah. All right, guys. Well, let us know what you do for rejection, how you handle it. And because we might need some good ideas ourselves. <laughs> We're trying to take this advice, but you may have something even better for us. Until next time. Thanks for listening to Artist Soar. A podcast for artists by artists. And if you have any questions, feel free to email us at hello at artistsoar.com. And be sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts so you can get more of us and we can bring in some sponsors to help you and help us. 